Hey everybody, thanks for watching. So I know I promised that this video was going to be the full rundown of my ES-335 build that I just completed. However, as much as it breaks my heart, I've had to tear her back apart. Um, I was having some wiring issues. Some of, the pot some of the pots weren't working properly. So I took everything apart, rewired it, thought I found the issue, still chasing gremlins, ended up taking the pots out and having them tested or testing them myself and then taking them somewhere to have tested. And uh, I found that two of them were bad, but the manufacturer is honoring them and they are sending me new ones. So in the meantime, I've decided to share with you my first ever guitar project, which was my 1995 Korean made Fender Strat Squire. Um, I've had it since I was 12 years old. I am 35 now, so everything in it's all original. It just wasn't a joy to play anymore. And as I got more interested in actually taking lessons and learning how to play correctly instead of just bedroom learning, uh, I knew that she needed some upgrades. So, so I'm going to share those with you in a two-part video series while we wait for the parts for the ES-335 to come back in. I hope you enjoy this video and my first attempts at recording with the intent to go on YouTube. So here we go. Today I have a special project to myself. Uh, this is my 95 Fender Korean Squire Stratocaster. It has pretty good intonation for what it is, and I just want to do some upgrades on it. The frets need a little bit of work. The fingerboard needs cleaned. I'm going to be installing a new nut on it, new locking tuners, uh, new string trees, new pickups, new pick guard. Basically, I'm rebuilding the guitar from scratch. The only thing I'm not doing is sanding down and refinishing it. So here we go. Okay, the strings are removed. Now I am going to remove the neck from the body. With the four screws removed, you can remove the backing plate. I'm using this little Tupperware jar to hold everything. Some items will be reused, some items won't. Now I will support the neck and flip the guitar over. It should fit rather tightly and just wiggle out of place. There we go, no information stamped on the neck. You can see it's pretty dirty. Um, so we're going to set the neck aside, work on the body for now. Now what I'm going to do is remove all of the pick guard screws. Just, I just wanted to show you real quick how unique those um, near the bridge screws are. See here's your standard pick guard screw. Here's the bridge screw. And that's hollow, it's a little leg fits down in there and there was a sonic pickup that went across here, just underneath the strings, it was really small. And it sent a signal via MIDI to your computer. It was really cool, I never got to use it. I saw it in uh, Guitar Center and Mars Music when it was around for the Tampa folks. Um, so you see here we have this ground strap on the trim claw. We're gonna have to remove that and I'm just gonna cut it because a new um, strap is being put in place. that horrible little tiny block. It's not even a quarter inch thick, I think. I'm gonna be putting a new block on there. I'm gonna be removing the saddles, cleaning everything up, repolishing it. I'm gonna be reusing the main part of the trim, just putting a new block on it. Of course, fill in those holes so there's a little bit more bite. I don't have to do any routing. There's just gonna be a lot of cleanup here. I am going to add copper tape in all cavities just to keep any interference down. I know the, the pickups that I got are supposed to eliminate that, but I don't want to take any chances. I'm going to build this thing right. So now that I have the body completely stripped down, I can work on removing the tuning keys from the neck. 
And if you're ever curious as to why somebody would want to change their tuning keys on a guitar that plays pretty well um, and decently stays in tune, there are, there are a lot of things that can cause it to go out of tune, but tuning keys are huge. So here we have a nice tight key. Well, actually kind of loose. Nice tight key. Look at this guy though. That translates to there's something in here that's an issue. This one here is one of my worst ones. This is my G and just spinning it, there's almost no tension in there. Well, these ones, nice and tight. Now, this one's pretty loose too. Just look at how easily that flops around. Same here. So this nut, it's actually kind of loose if I slide it. And I think if I slide it enough, Pops right out. Add a little bit of glue in there. All those holes I had to fill. The only hole that lines up correctly, this upper hole, this hole, and this hole. But these are big. They don't need to be big anymore, so I'm filling them. I'm also doing the same thing to the neck. I filled in all the original tuning key holes, which I will no longer need, but I want them to be filled. I don't want to look at them anymore. So I'm going to put some tape down and chisel these off. And here we are after the nubs are removed. I'm not going to restain this or anything. You are going to be able to see a slight little color difference between the toothpick wood and the maple. And that's okay. I just wanted the holes filled. I didn't want to look at holes. I need to open these holes up for the new tuning keys. That is what I'll be working on next. Back to the neck. Now I'm back outside and I've been carefully and gently using a T-handled reamer right here to open up the holes in the neck for the tuning keys. You can see here, I have them all nice and straight with a nice straight ruler. Now I'll just tighten down the nuts on the other side a little bit to make some indentations into the neck. And after some slow and careful work, we have brand new Fender locking tuning machines in my Squire's maple neck. The next step will be adding copper foil to all pickup cavities and electronic cavities. In this step, I have gone through and sanded down the top of the guitar. This is down to a 12, uh, 8,000 grit finish, the whole thing. I have to buff it out. Uh, all these holes here are filled with toothpicks. And it's okay that they're visible. I don't care about that because they're going to be underneath the pick guard. Let me get it here and show you. So it's not exactly lined up, but you can see that there is no holes visible. Here I've got the body strapped down to the bench. Been doing some light polishing on it for eh, about 20 minutes, maybe a half hour. Um, I am not going to go super, super crazy with the finish because I'll be very upset the first scratch I get on it. Like I'm not going to worry about some tiny imperfections and stuff like that. I just wanted it to shine again. So this is the side that Fender did not shine from the factory. Um, this was all hidden underneath the pit guard. I wasn't too concerned about it, but since I was there, I might as well do it. Uh, I've got my polishing, I think, pretty well done. I'm going to wipe this off and see how it looks. Oh, yeah. Nice and shiny. And these little micro abrasions and stuff like that right around the um, pit guard screws. I'm not too concerned because they are going to be completely hidden. What I was concerned about was this leading edge. Mirror finish. My drop fills, I could have done those better. I should have um, did some dirt removal. As you can see that one, you can see this one. This one actually, now that I've polished it out, if I can get it in the right light, kind of looks like a factory defect. Let's see. 
This kind of looks like a factory defect in the paint. So I'm going to uh, polish up the back side and then the body will be ready to start assembly. The back side is not awful. There are some deeper gouges from shirt buttons and stuff like that, laying it in places it shouldn't be. I'm not going to go too crazy. I'm just going to hit it with a quick, uh, let me see, what do I want to use? I think I'm just going to do a terry cloth bonnet with some polishing compound. And I've removed all those fine scratches. Nice and shiny again. It took like eh, three minutes. Good and smooth. There are some, uh, not really gouges, but indentations in the wood. Since it is such a soft wood, I'm not going to worry about these. This is going to get all scratched up again, so I'm not going perfect. I'm just removing anything that's really going to bother me. I see a spot right here you can get on camera. I will fix that. So 4 out steel will, will clean up chrome very, very well. So you see some of this dirt here. I'm just going to go over it nice and smooth. I'm not putting any pressure on. I'm just going across it. And there you can see how much it shines up. Obviously these marks here are from the saddles. Those are to be expected. Not hurting anything. Not going to worry about them. It's not a super quality piece compared to some of the other Strat pieces I've seen, but it'll do its job. I don't want to. I didn't want to change out the whole trim and have to re-drill the body and all that. Um, I don't use the trim arm a whole lot. But I don't really do dive bombs. I will flick the trim arm every once in a while to get that fun little sound that uh, a lot of people are starting to use now. Polyphia is very, very, very known for it. or very, they, they use it a lot. But look at that. Gets all that gunk off there. Doesn't scratch it up. Makes it look nice and shiny. Of course, now my fingerprints are all over it. A little concerning here, I did order a shortened trim block from Guitar Fetish. That's this one. It's supposed to be about the same size as this block, this uh, hot metal zinc block. I am concerned about fitment, very minor there, but a little bit is a lot on a Squire because they are a thinner body. It's a nice heavy block compared to the other one. There's the Guitar Fetish stamping. Now that I have the new guitar fetish block on, I am going to check to make sure our fitment is good. Lift up the body here. It's okay if that slides a bit. Make sure it's not poking out the bottom, and it is not. Oh, there's still plenty of room there. Okay. Whew. I was worried. I stupidly didn't pre-check the depth. I just bought it based on recommendation and uh, just learned a lesson there, almost. Did the trim block, just a tad bit wider up here, finds on the body right here, so I'm going to have to very, I'm gonna to have to very carefully and slowly sand in there, or file it to open up the cavity a little bit more. Yay! It's all right, nothing I can't handle. 